This is your host, True Seeker, and you're now tuned in to The Awakening. First of all, I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight live in the chat room, uh, tuning in to what we got going on here, this work uh, that we're continuing to build um, with um, upon the back and off the work of a lot of other scholars who have put in work before us, and we're just continuing that work with some um, open-minded conversation, bringing uh, to the table some of the pieces of the puzzles that we have found and hopes to uh, put our pieces together and make a picture out of it. Uh, tonight, the show is entitled um, The Anunnaki Elohim, and we're going to be talking about the Bible Owaspi. Uh, we're going to be interviewing and getting into a disc- discourse and discussion with uh, YouTube user host Sila Shalom and uh, some awesome revelations, man, that these brothers have um, uh, been um, putting forth and some stuff that they've found and uh, just been doing some um, some teachings on and some um, some studies on and putting it out there, you know, to the public. And I ran across some of the work, and it's, you know, been resonating with me and uh, shared it with some brothers, and it was the same way for them. So definitely wanted to have these guys on the show tonight. So... Um, I'm in Alabama. These brothers are in um, Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I believe we have on the line uh, Sila Shalom. Greetings. Are you there? How you doing? Yeah, Shalom, Shalom. It's good. I'm good, brother. How are you? All right, everything's good. Everything's awesome, good. man. There's a lot of people looking forward to the show, man. Been pumping it up. And, uh, you know, everybody familiar with my work and, uh, you know, have have definitely been checking you guys out. I've been, uh, you know, plugging the site. A lot of people checking it out, man. Uh, excited for tonight. Definitely. You know, I thank you for having me on your show. And, um, yeah, I've been uh, promoting the OWASP on YouTube for a while now, a couple years, because it's an interesting book, and um, we could get into that tonight and tie it in with the Anunnaki and mm-hmm. the ancient history that we're familiar with. Yeah, the um, I think the thing that interests me the most is um, dealing with the star people, dealing with the uh, the Elohim or the angels or the ones who, you know, came from above. Those who are mentioned of in every culture, whether it be Sumerian, uh, Egyptian, Native American, whatever it is, they have stories about you know these angelic beings who came down. Whether they had a hand in uh, creation or whatever the case is, and that's I think one of the things that. Um, you know, drew me to your work was some of the stuff that you guys have out there uh, expounding on, you know, the uh, angelic beings and the heavenly host, man. And, uh, you know, I definitely want to talk about that tonight. Um, But I guess, first of all, um, to a lot of the listeners and, you know, people who are listening to this on on YouTube and they may not be familiar with some of the terms, what is the uh, Bible Owaspi that you guys um, are speaking about? And um, can you give us some information on it? The Bible Owaspi came about in the year 1881, published in 1882. It came about through a man named John Newbrook, through automatic writing, some call it channeling, where spirits or angels, as you was referring, enter a mortal and communicate to the physical world to transmute information from the spirit world. And this is how information from the spirit world to the physical to the physical world is transmuted through channeling, mediumship, and other ways as well, even from face to face contact. But um these angels from the second heaven, which is the atmosphere, had a work to do in this specific time because we are in a new arc cycle. An arc cycle is a time period of 3,000 years. And every, um, at the beginning of every 3,000 years, the Creator, through His angels, lays down new inventions, new revelations to mortals. Now, John Newbro, for this specific uh, task, was chosen to reveal this information called the Owasi. And like I said, it was revealed in 1881 and he was commanded to get a typewriter and through the typing 
is how the angels transmuted the message with the book of Wasp. And he was commanded not to read what was being, um, what he was typing. He was commanded not to read it until it was finished. So when he finished it and published it, the publishers was confounded at the work. They was like, you know, how did you put this information together? So for some time now, he kept it secret that angels came to him. He didn't want to let nobody know that because, you know, people would think you're crazy. So eventually, he broke the ice and wrote a letter. And he explained how the book came about. And you can find that online. Just look up John Newbro, the biography, and he'll tell you how this information from this book called Owaspi came about. And the term Owaspi means earth, sky, and spirit. The O represents sky. The A-H-I represents earth. And the S-P-E, SPE, represents spirit. And that comes from an ancient language stemming from the continent of Pan that was located in the Pacific Ocean. Some people call it Lemuria, some people call it Mu. But it's an ancient language made of glyphs, similar like to the Egyptian language, or the Egyptian glyphs, I should say. And similar to the characters of the um, Japanese and Chinese, how they write their glyphs for their languages. Similar to pictorial glyphs. So that's how the book came about, through channeling from angels from the second heaven. And now the people debate with me saying that it came about demonically. But in order to determine if anything is demonic or not, you would have to expound on the subject, which they have not. And that's how I can determine if this book was demonically influenced or not. And I can tell you for a truth, reading it over several times, and the book has over 900 pages in it. It's a big book. It's like an encyclopedia. And I can tell you the book is not demonically promoted. It promotes righteousness, unity, oneness, one creator. Not a jealous God who is jealous and, and commands war. Not a God that commands bloodshed. In this book, it shows you how all those were false deities of the past trying to influence mortals to worship them. And all this we could confound on, expound on, you know, in different parts of history, and I could relate. Know, the angelical side to show you how man was influenced to do what he did. All right. Um, one thing I wanted to add in, in there, uh, whenever people may hear uh, the term automatic writing or the, the channeling of what you speak of, which he wrote the book, um, you know, it, I'm assuming it's, it's very much similar to the way um, the ancient prophets would receive Exactly. And and and, and uh, you know write their prophecies that that God or the Spirit of God was telling them to write down, and to not to read it and and to take the scrolls and just give it to people even without reading it that that was exactly. commanded in the Old Testament. Exactly. So very similar. Right. And instead of this this new agey foreign thing, um, something as those who are in tune with the Spirit, it's a uh, you know a way that you would you know receive um, you know messages from the other side. Uh, from right. God or whether it's a spirit and when I say spirit even in the, in, in the scriptures you know we have a lot of Christians who, who, who tune into the show um, you know even uh, you know the, according to the Bible um, the Most High would send out spirits with messages to right. tell people exactly. so God wouldn't you know in you know most cases come knock on your door and, and talk to you right. which he did yeah. I'm saying the most high of the scriptures did that, but he would send out a spirit with a message. Right. And this is kind of the, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Am I correct? Exactly. And through the message, you could determine whether it's a righteous message or an unrighteous message. So that's and, how I can determine you that. Would, you would actually judge that by the fruits of it. By the exactly. fruits of it with someone studying it, someone breaking it down, standing the test of time. Right. And just... And just watching the fruit that comes forth. That's how even, you know, you're supposed to judge everything by, you know, by its fruits. And you shouldn't judge anything before it's appointed time. Judge right. everything according to the fruits. Exactly. So that's why I got you on the show, man. I've been checking out some of the fruits coming from your channel, some yeah. of the teachings of the Bible of Waspy and how, um, although it may not, you know, 100% line up with some of the other ancient writings or whatever, yeah. um, in my eyes, it, it really does match up a lot. There's, there's a lot of similarities 
within the Holy Bible, within um, some of the other, um, you know, holy manuscripts. And, and, you know, that's why I have you on the show, man. Just want to talk about that. Um, um, I guess... I guess next, what I what I what I want to interject, because um, I've been seeing some of the stuff you've been talking about, and some of the people that you've been dealing with, some of the so-called knowledge heads and stuff like that, <laughs> dealing with the um, you know the Hebrew Israelites, and uh, I just want to let you know, man, I used to be affiliated with uh, the Gathering of Christ Church, GOCC. Okay. okay. I used to be affiliated with those guys and uh, and study under them, and um, we actually we actually brought them down. To, to Alabama, I went to Atlanta to speak on the streets with them and stuff. So I'm definitely um, in tune with a lot of the stuff that they're talking about and a lot of the false doctrines. And right. one thing right. you said, what you said in the video, because I, w- I watched it today, you were talking about, uh, um, you know, uh, Yahweh, you know, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yeshua, you know, like everybody arguing over these names, like what they call the sacred namers. Well, his name was Jesus, his name was Yeshua, no, his name was Yahshua, and they want to fight over the name or fight over the pronunciation, with, and they don't understand that it means the same thing or whatever the case is. And you also pointed out, man, something that's, you know, kind of like a gem to me, was like, man, I don't even have time for these little arguments and debates anymore. Like, I'm so past that. There's no there's no even reason for us to, to take a step back. So anybody who's being caught up on some of the little tangents, like, you know, that likes to be promoted through some of these movements, such as the, the you know, the black Hebrew Israelites or any of the other camps out there, man, they're just so... Uh, you know, caught up on like the earthly mindset that they don't understand the things of the spirit, man. Exactly, and that's well said. That's well and that's said. why I quit fooling with them. That's why I quit fooling with them, man. I learned real quick. Yeah, you know, you know that that's. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, I, I feel sorry for the brothers because they lack, like you said, they truly lack that understanding of the heavenly order. Mm-hmm. A philosophy breaks down this heavenly order like no other book. I read the Quran, you know, I read the, uh, the, the the Egyptian Book of the Dead, I read um, the Lost Books of the Bible, the Forgotten Books of Enoch, the Apocrypha, the Hebrew Bible, you know, the Anunnaki text. I read a lot of information, but none of them compares to what the Owaspi has to offer as presenting an order of how things are ran. Mm-hmm. And the parallels to them to the earth. So when you look on earth, you can see the parallels of things going on in heaven. So if we have a heavenly, mm-hmm. if, we, if, we, if we have an earthly government structure on earth with the president and the administration, likewise with the heavens. If you have hell on earth where mortals are warring against each other, likewise in heaven. If you have religious sex on earth, Promoting their God. My God is this. My God is that. Likewise in heaven. But the duty of those in heaven is to capture the souls of mortals on earth. So if you were Christian, the angelical force that established Christianity thousands of years ago, that heavenly kingdom you will go to. Likewise with Islam. Likewise with Buddhism. Likewise with Judaism. And likewise with Hebrew Israelitism, because they caught up in the same fashion. Mm-hmm. But those who stand outside, who do good unto others, who praise one Creator, as simple as that is, yeah, is more in service to the Creator, and will go yeah. to the kingdom or the heavenly place where those who will continue to resurrect in a sense to get to the higher heavens while those who worship these false gods will remain in those false gods' heavenly kingdoms for thousands of years to only realize they've lost time and have not progressed. Like a person who has been forgotten in the fourth, who has, who hasn't, like like in school, you got left back in the fourth grade. Just imagine you Mm -hmm. got left back in the fourth grade, still studying fourth grade education, and your homeboys didn't graduate college, but you're still stuck in the fourth grade, and you can't see that. It's the same order. So these simple orders on earth is reflected in heaven. So when you cross over and enter these heavenly realms, you will be faced with the same problems you had on earth if you're not progressing. And the progression is service unto others. That's how you're graded. 
Everyone is graded from 1 to 99, and your grade is determined by what you do for others. The more you do for others, the higher the grade. The more you do for yourself, lower the grade. If you're a selfish mm-hmm. person, you're graded as one. And when you cross over, there's a place for, free, for you for that grade. If you labor for yourself and labor for others, 50-50, your grade would be 50. And you would be mm-hmm. placed in the heavenly realm for those doing that labor. And if you do, if you labor for others wholly, denying yourself in a way, self-sacrifice and just doing for others wholly, you will be ranked as the highest in the heavenly order. You will be in the heavenly kingdom of God, which is in the third heaven, the third atmospheric plane. The atmosphere is made okay, up of whenever you planes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just wanting to expound a little bit on what you said. Yeah, yeah, we're going to keep going. Um, right. You mentioned, you know, the uh, third heaven. You have a diagram. I don't know if you made it or if you got it from somewhere about the third, the um, the first, second, and the third heavens. And right. um, I just want to say, while I was watching that and then I went out, uh, driving and seeing the horizon, I seen the first heaven, second, and the third that you had on the diagram. And while I was driving, I could see the atmosphere that we can see, like the air that we breathe, and right above us, right. seemed like with that 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 diagram that you had seemed to be the first heaven. Exactly. And then as you looked up just a little bit on the horizon, I would say a few miles in the air seemed to be with the diagram you showed to be the second. And then space and beyond to be the third. Right. Is that correct? Right. So the so you said the, the the third is still in. See, let me break it down like this. The Earth is subjected to a vortex, and this vortex is what we call heaven. To put it in plain terms, it's the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is composed of three parts which we call the first, second, and the third heaven, or the first atmospheric region, the second atmospheric region, and the third atmospheric region. And keep in mind, we can pour real beings, so you can't expect to look up and just see these things and, nah, because we're still terrestrial beings. These are realms that you have to inhabit after this realm, but preparations can start from now. But the third realm is the highest realm of the vortex to the planet. Outside of the third realm is the ether, etheria, where the etheria, the high raised angels dwell. So you have to graduate through the atmospheric regions to get to etheria. That's the whole goal. And the God, and, and who you call God, who, who, who the world call God as, as we understand it, is an angel. Like the president is a, 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 a ruler of a country and he... He governs the country, likewise with God in the heavenly order. He is, he is in charge of all the lower heavens beneath him and in charge of the earth. And he has a reign, likewise, with how a president has a four-year reign, likewise, with the gods. This is the order that Owaspi explains. And then you can see the parallels on earth because we live in the same order. You have a president, he reigns for four years, then another, then another president reigns for another four years. Now put that with the gods. You have one god reign for 400 years, then another god reign for another 400 years. And these 400 years are called sub-cycles. And they reign over different regions of the, uh, the ether and different regions of the earth? The etherian angels reside in the high atmosphere in etheria. They seldom de- deal with corporeal worlds. Their works are more in the etheria. But they come to corporeal worlds every 3,000 years to set down whatever needs to be progressive for man at the time. So, in our atmospheric region, in its vortex, you have a heavenly order. And in the third heaven, you have God and his heavenly kingdom. In the second heaven below God, you have the Lord God, and they rule over continents. So if you have seven continents, you have seven Lord Gods within the second heaven ruling. And under the Lord Gods in the first heaven, you have the Lords, their land gods. They deal with the affairs of mortals. And under the Lord, you have guardian angels who are each, who are over each and every mortal. Every mortal has a guardian angel, like a parent. 
Like when you have a kid, that parent is, that, that kid is yours forever. So you know. Okay, let me ask you this while we're on that. Mm-hmm. Where do these guardian angels dwell? Are they um, in touching distance um, of us, or are they watching over in the heavens? They're on earth with us. Because their labor okay, is with, their, their labor earth. is right. Their labor is on earth. That because that's the order. The Lord and the guardian angels, their labor is on earth. The Lord God, their labor is in the second heaven. So when the spirits are received up, that's when their labor and the host of angels in that region have to deal with this newborn spirits coming up into these regions, those who die on earth. Spirit births. A mortal death is a spirit birth. You're born again, that's all. You're coming to the realization of the spirit life now. And immortality begins. Or everlasting life, but the, the the seed is sowed on earth first. What you reap on earth is what you're going to sow when you cross over. So if you if you if you sow lies and deceit, that's what you're going to reap when you cross over. If you sow righteousness and love to others, that's what you're going to reap when you cross over. And you have a grade and a place for everything. And OASP expounds on this and breaks it down. Have you heard of the, um, or, or or have you read the Apocalypse of, of Peter? Have you checked that out yet? The Apocalypse of Peter, that was a couple of years ago, so I can recall any verses. Yeah, well, they actually, yeah, they actually talk about how um, whatever you did on Earth, those would be the spirits of the demons would would deal with you when you cross over. Right. If you was a rapist, you'll be right. raped. You'll be molested by. Right. Demons. If you was a, uh, you know, if you was a murderer, whatever you was doing, you're gonna be tortured on the other side, according to your sins. So it's exactly. kind of the same. Because you're gonna be met with the same counterparts, like on Earth. So if you was rolling on with, Earth as in heaven, right. So all those who died prior to you, who was practicing that behavior, is the same ones who's gonna come back to you at your time of death, and they're gonna greet you. I don't know if you ever been to a person who's been there death. I have, and I had been witness to a dying person seeing someone they knew who had passed on prior and conversating with that person like they're standing right there. I have been witness to this. And I have others who have been witness to similar realities. So for some people who think this is just play and joke, I feel sorry for them because I have indulged time in this, researched this, and not just from a, 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 a translating etymology standpoint. I'm talking from a spiritual standpoint. Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, there's, yeah. There's a big difference in having just the intellectual knowledge and the book knowledge, and having some and, and knowledge of somebody else's experience right. until you actually, you know, it becoming a reality for you. Uh, right. Nobody can convince you because you know exactly. because you, you you you've experienced firsthand, and. Um, you know, I wanted I wanted to back up as well because, you know, you talk about these uh, these spirits who are over different regions and different parts of the uh, the atmospheres and things like that. Even even within the scriptures, we see how, you know, they were prince, uh, you know, princes and and um, you know um, rulers, powers, and principalities over certain regions of the earth as well, which were uh, actually uh, traveled from earth to heaven back and forth. Right. And they were dealing with you was talking about this 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 war going on because they were withstood by certain other um, uh, forces in in, in the uh, spirit realm. Can you kind of go into a little bit of detail about how um, you know these angels may be at war with one another, or the or the lower level entities are, are dealing with, with with the righteous one, or you know how does that work? True indeed. According to Waspy. Right. I know the scriptures too, and and mm-hmm. and comparing the two, you know the Bible, it gives you a dim outlook of the heavenly yeah. order, because the Bible is more earthbound than to say heavenbound mm-hmm. as far as the information. Now, Owaspi, on the other hand, has a, a, a large amount of information on the spirit realm coinciding with Earth history, starting from its create the, the creation of man to the present time. Now, to answer your question about these fallen angels or these angels that, 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 that you know, to say somewhat going against the grain, 
like I stated before, every 3,000 years, these high Etherean angels come down to the lower realms or the corporeal world, their atmosphere. And to the angels ruling in that atmosphere of that planet, these Etherians will set orders and laws to that atmospheric angel.